Well, good morning. Man, I hope you've had a good Christmas. Uh, I hope you had a good morning. I know last week, Christmas Eve, was just awesome to do that together, and I'll get to more of that here in a minute. But today, what I want to do is I just want us to pause for a moment, and I want to look back. Because 2023 was a crazy year in the life of this church. And we just need to pause. It's really important that we stop and just remember. Looking back is an important thing for us to do. Because when you're in the middle of a moment, sometimes it's hard to understand everything that's going on. You can get caught up in the emotion of what's happening or you get lost in how difficult the moment may feel and it's hard to see how God is working. But when you stop and look back, you get the full picture of God's faithfulness. And looking back was also common practice in Scripture. All throughout the Old Testament, the Israelites would raise altars to God after monumental moments. Now, the purpose of this was to plant a marker to remember what happened. They would raise an altar and remember that God was faithful to his promises. Now, there's a song we've, we've sang in here a couple of times, and I, I used it as one of the uh, songs for the bumper video we play before sermons, but it, it says it really well, so I'm just going to use the lyrics because it helps us understand the significance of planting markers. It says, now those altars in the wilderness tell the stories of his faithfulness, and never once did he fail, and he never will. This is what we're going to do today. We are going to look back into the wilderness of 2023 and see all the altars that remind us of God's faithfulness. Will you pray with me? Uh, Father, first, I'm so thankful for how faithful you have been. That even in the midst of chaos and confusion, you were working. And we see the fruit of that now. And so, God, this morning we want to look back and celebrate just how good you are. I ask that you would pour through me the gift of preaching, that you would use these human words to speak eternal truth and shape us to be more and more like you and keep running as hard as we can for the mission you've called us to. We thank you so much for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Well, the other night, Megan and I, we sat and we looked at photos of where life was a year ago. We do this pretty regularly, but this, this particular one was a little different. We were looking at a specific time and just remembering what was it like a year ago. And it's crazy how different things are now. I mean, it's wild what a year does. A year changes so much. I mean, a year ago, this church was still in the midst of a lead minister search. It had been a pretty strenuous process that had brought a lot of disappointment. If you remember, there were two different times that the search committee thought they had found the new minister, only to have something not work out. And that's a, that's a terrible feeling. You think you get to the end of the journey, only to find that now you have an unknown distance to go. That's hard. And a year ago, for us, my family, we were still living in absolute chaos. We were, if you don't know, we were staying in my in-law's house, and I was driving really far to work. We were driving really far to church on the weekend, trying to figure out how to make it work. We were working on this house we had bought for some unknown reason, and we were trying to make it livable because it wasn't. We were just trying to figure out what to do, and all that time we were just trying to, fi- we were wondering what on earth God was doing. Like, why were we in this season? And I remember spending days working on the house and just venting in prayer. Like those angry prayers that you don't tell people you pray because you're not really supposed to do that, you think, and you're just angry and yelling at God. I remember those moments very vividly. And there were times where I would look in Scripture and just try to find affirmation for my feelings. And I remember finding these moments where David prayed things that just sounded so similar to the way I was praying. And there's one, there's two of them I want to share with you. One is Psalm 22. And David says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my words of my groaning? 
Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. And in Psalm 13, David writes, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. Something I find amazing in this passage is how similar it sounds to things we say. Like, God, if you, will you just tell me what's going on or I'm going to die? We've all felt that. And maybe last year, a year ago, this is what life was like for you. I know it was for me. And I know it was in the life of this church as a whole. There was a lot of disappointment in the minister search process, and that creates frustration. It's hard to see how God is working when it seems like at every turn, the door is closing. You know, there was a time, this was months ago, but I described the feeling of things like this to you this way. I said, it can oftentimes feel like you're riding on a train and the track is being laid as you're going forward. And it looks like maybe you're coming to the end of the track and disaster is going to happen. Then all of a sudden another track goes down and you get a little bit longer of relief, but it always feels like disaster is imminent, Right? Sometimes life can feel that way. And that feeling was reflected in our numbers. I look back at the spreadsheets, which some people love spreadsheets. I do not. I think they're very boring. I get lost in them. But those, those spreadsheets, the numbers you find in spreadsheets, they don't tell you everything, but they do tell a story. And it reflected a general feeling. And so when you look back a year ago, at the numbers and what was going on in the life of this church. From January 1st, 2023 to March 26th, our average attendance was 202 people. And we had on average about 20 people serving on Sunday morning. And if you go back further, that was a continuation of 2022. It was just, things were just like that for a long time. There was no up, there was no down, there wasn't really any marked growth. There wasn't really much connection. The thing I heard over and over again as I've talked to people throughout the year, they just described it as empty. People would come, they would sit, and they would leave. There wasn't much other than that. But starting on April 2nd, things began to change. This is where we can look back and see God's faithfulness. If you remember us telling the story, this, this was the weekend that the search ended. And the story of the end of the search is just crazy. Let me recap it for you really quickly. It, like I said earlier, twice the committee thought they had the position hired, and twice it fell through. Megan and I, for all of 2022, were searching for a house in Cincinnati while living at my in-law's house, living at her parents' house, which is here in Rising Sun. We offered 10 times on seven homes and never even had an offer open. They wouldn't even consider it. We ended up buying this house in Rising Sun with no plan on why. We didn't really understand what God was doing. We just knew he was telling us to go to Rising Sun and wait. And so we did. We bought our house in October. We moved into it in January, and we just continued to wait. And during all of that in our life, the elders were still searching for a minister here. And I got a call in March asking if I would be interested in the position. And quickly, God affirmed on both sides that this would be the right move for us and the right move for the church. And I accepted the position. And after 40 weeks of being without a lead minister, almost to the day, the waiting was over. And Adam pointed this out the weekend I was introduced, but the number 40 is pretty significant in Scripture. It's often linked to times of waiting. Jesus went to the desert to be tempted for 40 days. The Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And RSCC waited for a new lead minister for 40 weeks. And through all of that frustration and doubt and uncertainty, God proved faithful. I want you to listen to what has happened this year. This is the result of faithfulness in the waiting. 
Since Easter, our average attendance has gone from 202 a year ago to 284 on average. Okay, that includes things like fall break and one service and all these things we've done and the numbers kind of go up and down. We are up to 284 on average. And for the last six weeks, that number hasn't dropped below 300 and it's actually been 330 plus every weekend. That's crazy. That, that type of growth is insanity. Like you don't see that very often. And it's a really, really good thing. We've gone from having 20 people serve on the weekend to having over 30 people serve on Sunday morning. And that doesn't include all the people we've added in student ministry and in different ways to serve around the church and grounds and decorating and all the different ways people have gotten connected. And here's the most important one. Since Easter, we have had 25 people get baptized. That is awesome. That is so good. And there's so much more. We started having men's and women's events that have been incredible. Our church, in one day, raised over $40,000. And I want to be clear on what this was. This wasn't us taking money from the general offering and giving it to a mission partner. This was people in our church. We said, hey, they need 40 grand. And our church raised actually 45. And we sent it to Sunlight in Haiti to help them build a new roof. And that was just over and above normal tithing. That is incredible. We gave away meals at Thanksgiving and Christmas. We provided toys for foster, cares, foster care families at Christmas. We gave dozens of backpacks full of supplies to a ministry called Women of Alabaster. And my favorite part of this story is that Trudy Warren, when she planned this and she organized the whole thing, she had told them, ah, we'll probably get like eight backpacks or so. And we gave like 35. That's amazing. We just have to dream bigger. That's what we have to do. We are seeing God bless the waiting. When we look back at this year, we can see time and time again how God has been faithful. You know, I read those Psalms of frustration earlier, but I want you to listen to what David says on the other side of the waiting. Because he wrote those Psalms in times of difficulty and fear, and he's running or he's in darkness and confusion. But on the other side, This is what David writes, Psalm 40. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. And in Psalm 13, after lamenting about feeling lost And forgotten, David says this in verse 5. He says, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. And he has, hasn't he? He has been so good to us. But we're not done. What the Israelites did throughout their time heading towards the promised land is they would raise altars after every victory. When they crossed the Red Sea, they put up an altar to remember that God split the sea and defeated the Egyptian army. After God parted the Jordan River in Joshua 4, they raised an altar to remember God's faithfulness. Noah built an altar to God after the flood to praise God for saving them. Moses, Isaac, Abraham, David, Joshua, and on and on. Every time God was faithful to his promise and gave them victory, Israel built an altar. And after they'd reached the promised land, they could look back into the wilderness and see these monuments and remember that God was faithful every time. As a church, we have seen God be faithful in 2023 in amazing ways. And I want to give you a visual of the work that God has done this year. I want you to look at this picture. Someone sent this to me last week. The top picture is Christmas Eve 2022. The bottom picture is Christmas Eve last week. The difference in those two photos is 200 people. That is wild. 
200 people. Last year at Christmas Eve, there was 204. This year at Christmas Eve, there was 405. Now, I don't show this picture to you to pat ourselves on the back for the increase in number. It is exciting, and it should be celebrated. It's a good thing. But there's something way more significant here than just the increase in number. We aren't just merely increasing in number. We are increasing in our love for Jesus. We are increasing in our knowledge of Jesus. We're increasing in our trust in him, and we're increasing in our desire to take the gospel to the world. That's what that represents. We went from 200 to 400 because we've caught the mission of sharing the gospel with our community, and people are responding. We are becoming a church that makes disciples. We are fulfilling the mission that Jesus set out for us in Matthew 28 when he said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. This is what we're doing. The reason for our growth isn't because we created exciting new programs or we have a great stage presentation. We will do those things because it's good and we should. But we're growing for the right reasons. Because we proclaim the gospel. We love our neighbors and we speak the truth. And so... Let today be a day that we raise an altar to God's faithfulness. Let these moments be a reminder that never once has God failed and he never will. RSCC spent 40 weeks wondering. And in that time, God was preparing us for what was to come. And now we've crossed the Red Sea. We've seen victory, and it's been incredible, but there's still a long journey to go. Earlier this year, I presented us with a new vision for the church, a mission statement that kind of wraps our whole everything up, and it puts everything in line for how we function going forward. And the statement is simply this, that Rising Sun Church of Christ exists to help people know, love, and serve Jesus Christ. It's very simple. And I wrote it that way very intentionally because I want us to be laser focused on Jesus. We want to be a place where people come and find hope and we want to remove every roadblock that is in the way. That's why in 2023, we restarted a few things that have been gone for a while. We are now back in the nursing home, live streaming our services as much as they'll let us in there. They told us what dates they had available. We took all of them. And we're taking more in 2024. We're actually there this morning, giving them communion, hosting them in service. It's a good, good thing. We're getting more engaged in things like hospital visits and care ministry so that people are getting their needs met when they're in difficult times. We're there. We started the bus program back up so that anyone who can't get to the church on their own doesn't have an excuse to not come. We'll get you. And a side note on that, if you have anyone in your life that has trouble getting to church, please let us know. We will go pick them up, and we will drop them off right at the front door so they can come. You can talk to me or Adam, or even better, if you go to one of our deacons, his name is Walter Barnes. He oversees that. Go tell him, or go talk to Tim Adams or Dustin Shelton. You guys know these people. Go tell them you know someone who needs a ride. We'll get them. We want to remove everything because we are focused on making disciples. And the amazing thing that runs parallel to all those measurables that I've shared, all the things that are on the spreadsheet, are the immeasurables that you don't see in the numbers. All these stories we know, they're amazing. Not only are people getting baptized, but then they're getting deeply connected in the church. They're going to Sunday school classes and being taught and grown. They're getting their family to come with them, and now their family is finding hope in Jesus Not only are we doing great men's and women's events that study scripture and help people find connection, but those events are bringing the lost and broken into relationship with other people that they desperately need and into relationship with Jesus. 
We are seeing renewed life in people who were hopeless, and we are seeing renewed trust with people in our community. That is a good thing. God has been faithful. So as we look back and we celebrate, we also have to start looking ahead. 2023 was amazing, but it was also setting the stage for much, much more. We still have people to reach. We still have disciples to make. We still need to see young Christians educated and trained to follow Jesus so that they can become leaders and teachers. We still have a community that is mostly filled with people who are unchurched. Most of our community, I'll share more about this next week, but the bulk of our community surrounding us does not attend a church. We still have work to do. We still have mission partners around the world that desperately need our support and prayer, maybe now more than ever. We are still at the beginning. So as Paul says in Galatians, Chapter 6, he says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. We've not yet reaped the harvest. We are still planting. The harvest is yet to come. We still have work to do, so let's keep going. Keep inviting, keep loving, keep pursuing Jesus, keep reading scripture, keep helping each other, keep studying the word, keep getting to know Jesus, keep spurring each other on to do good works. Because my hope by the end of 2024 is that we have to buy more chairs and figure out where to put people. I would love that. That's the best problem to have. And the reason I want to see that happen is because I want to see all these people know Jesus. It's not about the people in the seats. It's about people who are lost becoming found. Let's never be content with how things are and always be pursuing what is next until Jesus returns or calls us home. I've said this a lot, but I want to remind you, those of us who follow Jesus carry the greatest news in the history of news. There is nothing better than knowing that our guilt, sin, and shame has been washed away and we don't have to carry it anymore. There's nothing better than knowing that Jesus sets us free from the penalty of sin because he paid our price at the cross. It is the most important information in the history of mankind and everyone needs to know. If you are a follower of Jesus, you have a responsibility to share it. You have to. Everyone needs to know that freedom. If there's an empty seat next to you right now, fill it. We all know someone who's not here that doesn't know Jesus and needs to be sitting in the seat next to you. What's the worst that happens if you invite them? They say no, okay. Then you invite them again. This information's too important. It has eternal consequence. Share the hope you have in Jesus. If the row you're sitting in is full, make us add another one. We will keep adding. We will figure out a way to get more people in here because the hope we have matters. Get people here. Keep going. God is faithful. Don't grow weary in doing good. Keep going. If you've come today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you haven't surrendered your life to him and you've never been baptized, man, what a better time than now. You know, New Year's always represents new beginnings, starting something new. Now's a great time to surrender your life to Jesus and start brand new, be raised up as a new creation and run as hard as you can after him. Join in with this family who is in pursuit of Jesus and let's go together. If you wanna know him, come talk to me. I'll be right here as we sing this next song. Boldly walk forward and proclaim that you're ready to surrender to him and we would love to celebrate with you. Come and talk to me as we sing. Let's pray. 
Father, I am so thankful for the work you have done. It is because of your faithfulness that we've seen the increase. We've seen seen people come to know you. We've seen surrender happen. We've seen people find hope. So God, I pray that you would keep doing that. That you would use us to declare your glory, to share the gospel, that people who are lost would become found. And we would continue to see increase because it's all for your glory. Everything is for you. So God, continue to call us out, continue to equip us and embolden us and give us the confidence to share our hope. Thank you for Jesus and the hope we have because of the cross. It's in his name we pray, amen.